Hello and welcome to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast with Mike and Laurent. It is Friday, October 22nd. In this episode, United Save Ole again. We so he would go away. You will do our use our Champions League roundup. Liverpool were lucky. Chelsea and City first class. But first, Mike, you went to live soccer in America in person. I did. Tell us all about the Orlando Pride. Uh, yeah, um, so it was it my third is MLS game ever. The uh, that's the, I don't know, who doesn't matter. I think it's just Orlando City FC, but uh, SC <laughs> down here. I've been here four years. Uh, I've never gone. I've actively avoided it. Uh, I think MLS is terrible. I've been to a few games before, um, and uh, I went with a few friends. I had a great time. Uh, it's it's a fun time out, right? But, you know, and, and you have a good time. You have a couple of beers, and it's fine. Um the quality of play is never mistaking what it actually is, right? Uh, they're missing 10 foot passes. Everything's three to four steps slower than you would, you know, normally watch in any other European league. Um, the quality is just, it's just, it's lacking. Right. Yep. And you know that going in. So you, you, you have that as an appreciation. And I found myself sitting there kind of going like, well, why? Right. Like why did they, effectively push away the FIFA calendar. Why are they going against the ah, green the calendar, the calendar, right? Like that's kind of the main thing I kept thinking because I feel like that's the, the biggest pain point for them in having European quality talent. Right. I think that there, mm. there's a number of problems obviously, but I, the consistency or the inconsistency with the calendar um, is a decision that they made what 30 years ago. Uh, and why did they do that? I have a couple of theories. One is they looked at it and they said, we're going to try and capture the Latin market, the Latino market. And in doing so, they're going to be on song with the Mexican league. They're going to be on song with the South yeah, but American the Mexican leagues. league is split. It, they're right. not even on. Well, at the time, well, the Mexican so, league was that way. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's what I mean. So they were like, okay, we're going to align with effectively our neighbors and continue to lean into that Latin market as opposed to, the European market. Now they couldn't have foreseen that, you know, it would have become huge. It's ironic that soccer football is in America has become so big despite what the MLS does, right? Like it's it not, is, MLS so what, I think, I think the thing that's interesting is MLS has lots of problems. It is to be fair from a business perspective, doing really well on some sort of Ponzi scheme where it's they a just Ponzi keep scheme. I was going to say, thank you. Yeah. yeah? Uh, they do not make money on television, barely. They don't right. dent ratings. Locally, some teams do okay. LAFC. Um, Orlando I mean, is one of them. Orlando does well locally. But they had a derby in New York, and it was empty, right? That's yeah. bad, right? Mm -hmm. That should not happen. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. There are local markets that do Seattle, Portland. That's a really working market. Uh, you can see Toronto, when it's good, does well. Uh, but Dallas is a catastrophe that just doesn't work mm -hmm. there. They are selling players all the time. Um, the galaxy are really dependent on stars. I think there are two big errors that I see uh, errors, just issues that I see. One is it's run by NFL people who run it like the NFL where they really do want stars and they think that there is a quarterback version of this game where you can pit player against player. And aside from Messi and Ronaldo, that's not the history of the game. It's really, there are maestros, they are, there are players that transcend it, but mostly it's about your team being good. Uh, and right. we, and our structure is not designed to make teams, right? We don't like to spread the wealth evenly. We want superstars that run the game. Like if it was, I'm sure if it was up to the MLS, they change the rules so that there's one player on the team who cannot be touched. Right, like they would do something. Stupid. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Flag on the play. Right, um, exactly. And and I and I and I I do think about the quality. I do think about pro rel. I do think the calendar thing is. It depends what we want to lean on. Like, what does the MLS want to be strategically? Right, like mm -hmm. in the world soccer thing, I think that's the piece that's missing. I think business wise, they're doing well. They get the stadium experience. They get that there's local people, but where do they want to fit in in world football? Do they want to be part of Latino? Do they want to be a Conmebol kind of 
that style or do they want to be European? And I think the fact that it's both is the problem. Yeah, it has certainly has an identity crisis. And I think, you know, we were talking about it before we started recording. And um, I think the weather is way too much of a factor for them. And they're they're avoiding intentionally. And again, these are decisions that were made. Dude, 25, 30 teams play in fucking Sweden. Shut the fuck up. Right. In December and January. And yeah. and that's that's <laughs> where I'm like, OK, they were going for a lot of the summer months, right? Where you're not competing with the NFL, NBA. You're only competing yeah, but with baseball. it makes baseball. for bad soccer because you're playing when it's 4,000 degrees. Exactly. In, in Orlando down here, right? And yeah. and yeah, so you're already at a loss for the quality and you are, you're you you're putting more obstacles in the way, not removing them. Um, but, but again, when you're making these decisions in the mid, early 90s, right? Whatever it was, mid 90s. I You're, think the re, there's a restart. It's really Garber getting the league down to 10 and then restarting. So you really – MLS yeah. is sucky in the 90s. It's some other league, and then there's a rebirth like in yeah. 2002 or something. Okay, sure. But so let's call it 02. Why don't you then upset the apple cart and go, okay, we're going to go on the European schedule now? Because you're trying to keep it sustainable. Right, you're not worried about what it can be, what it might be, and again, there's still the league is sustainable by virtue of a franchise model. The league isn't going anywhere. I it's understand. Fine. Yeah. I'm, well, no, no, no. What I'm saying is growing it into what would effectively be if you're if you're weaponizing all the quality of the theoretically of the United States and all of that money that you're waiting to to kind of rake in, you're not worried about the ceiling. You're worried about being legitimate, essentially, mm -hmm. and um. Where, where a lot of the other leagues come in again. In O two, there was no renaissance. There was no ESPN or NBC. I mean, ESPN was very, very briefly right. shown it was, in the Premier League. There was, but, the, but there is a, there is now more place and more value in live sports than ever. Right. I think the other issue is that I think was probably unforeseen is twenty thirteen, NBC, Rebecca Lowe broadcasting yeah. every game into the U.S. and basically going, this is what real football looks like. Yeah. Not two games a week, not just Arsenal, not just Man United once a week with Maka and Ian Dark where you kind of was on, but a full-on onslaught. We are going to take the most established popular league. I don't know if it's the best quality. That's, that's to be debated. It is a built-in... English speaking, historically known league that mm -hmm. just basically saturated the entire US market. And while the ratings are not great, they just be clear about that. Like an MLS game on a Sunday night does okay. And to this day, and it's very racist, I don't have a better way to put it or whatever, that Mexican league games in the US are the most watched games in the US, period, full stop. Don't tell me that MLS is bigger. The yeah. fact is, Club America on a Saturday night on television in the U.S., Spanish language or otherwise, is the biggest game on television. Sure. It's bigger than Man United Liverpool. It just is, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an important piece. And so right now, Garber is now trying to like be in both places. You have yeah. everyone being rebranded FC and getting European money and trying to sell to Europe Real while Salt culture – while culturally trying to be connected to South America. And yeah. And the other thing is, how do you – the question is: Is does do all does all football float all boats? Right? Does mm -hmm. the Premier League float football in this country? No, uh, that's a question I don't know. And I think I don't, I don't, to I your don't think so. to your point, what it it could it could if the MLS really was a path to the Premier League, exactly. Right? Then you would you would say. It, we could have like the relationship as like the championship. Like this team is coming up. You see Nicola Pepe goes from Dallas to a championship club like Bournemouth into Aston Villa. Mm -hmm. Then you have a path of just like, oh, my guy went from here to there. Right. Yeah. But that's not really happening. Our players are going to Germany. That's not. Is that lifting Germany? I think it's they we talked about it a while ago. It's it's creating an. It's finding and monetizing an inefficiency. You know who it's lifting is RB Leipzig. 
You it's know, lifting like, Germany. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, right. In terms of quality, so, but then they have their other problem. Like, they can't really get traction either. The thing is, with Germany, it's not just American players. Young English players are going to Germany, sure, too. They yeah, just no. are the place to grow because the Germans are like, I'm not paying for this because we have a cap. We don't have sheiks. We don't do it this way. There's only mm -hmm. one rich team, and it's Bayern, and they just buy the, the cream off the top. Right. And speaking, I will say, yeah. I got to see um, Spurs' rumored legend, Alexander Pato, the man who was linked to Spurs oh, that for guy. every now, yeah, oh that guy, every window for about a decade. Holy shit, he's still made of glass. And it was funny, like he like he would make a run and then he would just stop and be like, "You guys stink." Like <laughs> it was awesome. Well, he it was, was actually kind of cool. he was famous because he had like one incredible season mm -hmm. with Milan. He had actually had three the three seasons at AC Milan and then just died. Yes. Right. He just went everywhere. He had one half of a loan at Chelsea and now he's like yep. kind of hanging out at Orlando, but he's been gone forever. The funny thing is about some of these guys is he's still just 32, but his legend ha has left him. Yeah. And, uh, most and uh, I think we should probably transition to another legend. Uh, and that is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who's a fucking legend at Manchester United. But in our Champions League roundup, we can go through all the games, but there's really only one story, and it's United getting saved again, Ole getting saved again. I just don't know what to do with this team. This is what they do. Uh, they go down two goals at home. It's Fred and McTominay. It's the same crew. They run it all back. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindelof gets done for a goal. Doesn't close someone down. Maguire gets done for a goal and a set piece again. Uh, he doesn't seem to move. Refrigerator uh, Maguire. And United are down at the half. And I texted the, I texted you and Charlie just like, please fucking Christ, let this happen again. <laughs> <laughs> but to Ole's credit, and the one thing that he does have with this team, aside from tactics and patterns, which we know he doesn't, is there is a connection to the crowd to the passion, to the to the energy and passion of United, right? Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that I give Ole credit for. He somehow, as a legend, is connected at a visceral people level, right? Like yeah. the crowd at United, once they got their goal from Raff Rashford, it was an amazing goal. It came like, alive. Rashford made a run that I don't know how he saw it to make the run, and that's his best trait. And Fernandez made a pass that is one of these, like, these two guys are fucking incredible. And yeah. I think Rashford does make a difference for them. He's been out. And he scores it, takes it, takes it really well. And then Old Trafford just turns to fucking an attack war zone to levels of Anfield. It, it just did. And that's amazing about United. They have that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm jealous. City does not have that. No. That's what people, when people say empty head, that's what they mean. Yeah. City does not turn into a pack of fucking joyous attack wolves that are ready for blood and want to see their team just kill anything that moves. It just doesn't have that. It let's go back to let's go back to Rashford for a second because, yeah, like you said, he good. was he's great. And and as you said, he was he was out for a while, and United were sorely missing him, despite the fact that they have Sancho and they have Bruno and they have Ronaldo and all these stars. He's, right? He's different from them though. But he's the well, and 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 from a tactical perspective, and I'll let you get into that in a second, but. He transfers that Ole, that that old the spirit Trafford of energy, United is in him. Right? Yes, he is. Exactly. Yes, he is. He He's is one, one of their own. He is one of their own. Is exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. So yeah, and that I mean, matters. That fucking matters. And that's does. one of the DNA through lines of Ferguson is we want our kids in the team, class of ninety two. All that stuff it matters. He's I think United had, and I'm not even exaggerating, had something like thirty seasons in a row where a kid from the academy made their debut. Mm -hmm. Like it's been part of something that they do. And that goes back to Busby. That goes back to fifties. That goes back to the Munich air disaster. That goes all the way back. So that's mm -hmm. part of the whole thing. Right. Um, and, and as much as you love seeing Ronaldo, when it's, when it is one of your own, and I know this as well as anybody, it hits different. Right. And it's, it creates this, that's my fucking guy. And you just, instead of Ronaldo doing something good where you're like, Oh my God, he's so incredible. It's like that. That could have and been me even, out there. I love even, it. Yeah. Even more, it goes even more because it become it it goes into the local part. Like, That's not right. only is Rashford a United kid, he's from Manchester. Yes, 
He's from the ghetto. It would be as though it would be as though Derek Jeter had been from the Bronx. Right. But when you're <laughs> down to nothing, boom, explosion. Right? When you're down to nothing at halftime, Bruno Fernandez is annoyed, right? Yes, Jaden Sancho is annoyed. annoyed. But Rashford is disgusted. Rashford <laughs> is saying the, the things in the locker room that they're saying in the terraces, right? He's yeah. the same person. Yes. And that's the important thing is that he's the guy who's getting there in in players' faces and saying, get your shit together. We're going to go Although, win this game. there the was half. a controversy after the game. Ole basically called him out to the mat of just like, now you can start focusing on football as, a, as, a, as though oh, Rashford was like not – like feeding kids – was yeah was a, i'm like ole you're an idiot you picked the wrong dude like yeah <laughs> i was like yeah mm, you know what maybe feeding kids is more important than playing football i'm just saying. so we'll talk about united a lot more in the second half of the show uh for their upcoming game against liverpool well let's keep it moving to chelsea who yeah. roll right through with a, i think yeah. it was a four nothing win but that's yeah, really not the headline did. right um they're going to lose timo Werner, which you could argue is addition by subtraction but lukaku went down as well is there I mean, the latest on Lukaku? Have you heard anything? I haven't heard anything. It, it was yeah. a knock. The guy just went through him. And Malmo were fucking awful. They had yeah. two shots, none on target. You know, this was a complete master class. Like, they, these are where the Champions League, you're just like, Malmo, no, I, sorry. You, they're 0-3, haven't scored a goal, and given up mm -hmm. 11. Like, this is also, I want to say, Malmo, also the club that – um Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the coach for before he came to United. So that's the <laughs> level we're talking about. So uh, through line there. But yeah, I think the big thing for you for for Chelsea is they're both out a, a month at least. Yeah. Uh, pretty bad. One's muscular. Yeah. One's a real knock. Like somebody went through Lukaku. Uh, Lukaku's really good about coming back. The irony of it was, was that Tuchel was saying this week, Oh, he's mentally tired. Oh, he's fatigued. And then he played him against Malmo. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like one out of one mouth into the other. If there is a team that can handle it, it's 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 Chelsea. Like it might mean now that um Havertz has to play the nine. It might mean that, you know, Mount will play all the time. So they have the players, it might shift how they play. They may end up actually being more creative and have to play more like City do with the rotating pieces everywhere versus this number nine that kind of doesn't press. So they actually might be better. Uh, one of the things, uh, just one thing to go back on, you mentioned about United, the difference that Rashford makes is he's the only one of their frontline guys that just runs. They yeah. all want to come to the ball. Sancho wants to be on the ball. Ronaldo wants to be on the ball. He goes Fernandez space. wants to be on the ball. He's the only one he kind of plays, for an analogy, he plays more like Vardy, right? He just goes. Yeah. And if mm -hmm. you see the balls the way that Fernandez does, it makes a difference because everything just starts to open up. Yeah. So that's just the difference in terms of play. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, this was easy for them. They had no problem. Chelsea move on and shouldn't have a problem with anything. They have the depth to handle it. And then they, they have a really, like Chelsea are lucky. They have a get healthy stretch. Like they're going to, they're going to prepare for the narrative to be that Chelsea are going to win the league. Here are their next four fixtures. Norwich, Southampton, Newcastle, Malmo again, Burnley. Yeah. They don't play anyone. Then they play Leicester and United. But they but that's gonna got... be fifteen points for fifteen easily. For sure. Unless something goes wrong. Well, sure, which could happen, but like you walk into those going, and we'll talk about it in the best bet segment, heavily, heavily five hundred it plus favorites, right? Yeah. So yeah. so so yeah. so Luca so so even with Chelsea have a Lukaku. Chelsea have a little wobble. They lose some of their guys, but they have about as easy a schedule as they can have. They're also, then, uh, I want to, yeah. the, the forgotten man, the, for, the actually forgotten man is Christian Pulisic, who is hurt again. But the forgotten man for me is uh, Hakim Ziyech, who I think is, he's coming back from a knock. I don't know exactly, but he seems like he's, he's close. He's also, this is this is what I brought up yeah. when they when when Lampard was there. I was like, this team is tiny. Oh, yeah, right? no, absolutely. The front line guys, they have guys with steel, but that group of Mount Ziyech, Havertz last season I just always thought that they were and Werner I thought that they were always too small and that's kind of you could push them off the ball and then Jorginho sorry I forgot about him and then Conte is plays like a giant but he's 5'5 five, five. yeah he's 130 <laughs> pounds soaking wet so. and so you can muscle them yeah no you absolutely can but I think that they'll like we said they're 
getting Less hurt work. at the right time, I suppose, right? <laughs> if you, if there ever was a time to have, you're also going to have another international break in there in a few weeks now, in three weeks, I think. Um, so realistically, when guys. you hear, when you hear like Lukaku's going to miss a month, you're like, shit, that's going to be five or six games. Um, but it's, it's realistically, it's going to effectively become, uh, probably two to three. And when, like we said, when we look at the schedule, it's really not many at all. So, um, let's get into Liverpool. One of the games, I was getting a water at a (laughs) boy, one of the, uh, games of the early part of the games of the season. Um, and it's, you know, um, Liverpool back and forth, back and forth. Griezmann with uh, the the shall the we Gordie say Howe. Lamella, the Gordy Howe <laughs> hat trick. I was going to say the Lamella Eric Lamella special. Um, two goals and a red card. Um, nice to bring so, to bring Atletico level. Yes. The place goes bonkers because it's away at Madrid uh, again. This was Van Dyke's probably worst defensive showing yeah, he since got he's been back. Off. Uh, and this was the best game Griezmann has played. He's kind of slowly getting back into the good graces of the Real, of the of the Atleti fans being like, I want to leave. I want to go to Barcelona. Go to Barcelona. They're like, you're a fucking Atleti player, and we have Messi. Well, I want to leave Barca. Of, I want to go yeah. back to Atleti. <laughs> well, well, speaking of Ponzi schemes, right? we talked about it a few weeks ago how Barca basically got had in that deal. So... Uh, what did they end up selling for one forty? Like sold them for forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, in Liverpool, once they went a man up, even though it was only Griezmann, it wasn't like they lost any shape. And it was at the back, so. The funny thing about it was, was going to be downhill. When running. you watch it in real time, it just looked like a little regular high boot. But once you saw it in replay, I was like, oh, he fucking. Yeah, he's got to go. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to go. Although um, we did not talk about this because Arsenal had played. The foul by McCarthy on Saka is one of the worst non-red cards I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. He literally fucking kicked him. Just yeah. straight up like the way you would be if you were a soccer player. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> would you would not say, you would people. be the John Joe Shelby of uh of Granted um, Jaka, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you feel Shaka ish? Yeah. Ja- yeah. I, I would go a little bit Jaka. Um, I'm calling you Lee Cattermall without the pants pulled up. Would you stick your shirt like to your pants? No, no, I would let it flow. Okay, yeah. Ironically, Anyone when I sh- played hockey, I did the Gretzky tuck, but that's not oh, important. Okay, okay, um, okay. I don't like yeah. I don't like players who tucks their shirts in. <laughs> I guess I no, guess. I don't either. In football, I, I don't. I, I find don't. it, I find it appalling. Like I see, it's Kieran, like your mother dressed you. Yeah, it's like I see Kieran Tierney. I'm like, will you pull the fucking shirt out? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Rod- and Rodri like also. You're, a shirt you're late. You're running late for physics class. Like, shut the yeah, fuck up, you nerd. fucking nerd. Get out um, of here. Pull your shirt out. So a bonus, uh, <laughs> a, a bonus uh, Europe conversation is going to be Mourinho's uh, Roma. I almost said Mourinho Spurs. Oh God, help me. Uh, uh, loses. But, but, let's, but to be fair, let's let's give Liverpool a little bit more. Sure, Salah scored again. I believe he's on ten in a row uh, in yeah. games where he scored. He's is he the best player in Europe right now? Is there oh, anybody better? Question. Yeah, no, I mean, he, like we said, I think a week or so ago, he's having a all time season so far. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's you know, this team reminds a lot of the 2013 14 season because, like you said, they can't defend. I know a friend of the show, BJ, was asking us, uh, when Liverpool stops scoring, what's going to happen? They're not, they're not going gonna to stop scoring, they're not going to. Uh, unless they all get hurt, which is a possibility, just like last they year, do. if, if, and, and if the entire his, front line gets hurt instead of the and back to his line. point, there is the African Cup of Nations where Salah and Mane do go uh, for this. They're supposed Keita, to go. Who scored the goal? Keita scored a fucking worldie and then yep. got done in the game. So you saw a little bit of both of Keita. He's just too small and doesn't defend well enough. Uh, but I do, I do, I would be worried for Liverpool in terms of scoring. It's going to take. It's going to be a pairing that we haven't seen. It'll be Firmino, Origi, Jota mm-hmm. as the grouping, and maybe maybe there's a a, a a a midfielder who can go up front. I don't know if Harvey not James Elliot, Milner. The other one. <laughs> James Milner can play anywhere and do yeah. anything. What are you talking? James about? James Milner, He's... starting striker. God, what a fucking legend! Uh, and and maybe they'll just go defensive. Maybe they they'll finally uh, accept that. Um, that Trent Alexander Arnold is not a fullback and he can play on the wing. <laughs> well, for me, and uh, I mean, I'm waiting to see if Tiago makes that step forward because he's, he's never going to make the step forward because he gets hurt all the time. Well, that's I why know, he's but... ducks. <sighs> it's it's they're they're gonna they're gonna need to call on some depth, uh, but I I, they I still they don't... have more of but it. The way now. that 
look, the way that they have Robbo and Trent playing, they're not going to be wanting for offense, even when Mane and Salah aren't there. They'll have um, a hard time scoring. It, I think they they'll have might, a harder they time to... scoring. But the, the thing is, is like I said, it reminds a lot of the 2013-14 season. Yeah. Van Dyke is not your father's Van Dyke anymore. And he may get there. He, you can tell he's still working back from the injury, though. And that's not a slight on the guy. He had a very bad knee injury, and he's not a spring chicken. So that makes sense, right? Um, yeah. I think they but, have to go. I think the key thing for them is I don't know how injured Gomez was, but they need a – they need to spell him. They need a more athletic. I, they need to do something because I think this is the one issue that I always have at Liverpool, and I've been thinking about it for years. Is it's still the same group? Yeah. Like they might show fight, but it's still the same mm-hmm. group. Yeah. And uh, it's still the same Mourinho. <laughs> it is. I'm so excited about this graphic. For those of you listening, um, we've we've put some production value into the show today, and we've got the Marie, the famous Mourinho uh, cupping the ear. Uh, with Mourinho's Roma loses six to one. Six. Some, goals. They went somewhere very far away that I have to figure out where the hell. I don't went. even know where it is. I'm looking it up now. The best <laughs> part is that uh, it did not make Spurs' bad loss the worst loss of today. Oh, they played uh, somewhere called a two named place like Brighton and Hove Albion. Yeah. yeah is yeah. this Bodo Gimlet? Oh, I don't even know. But like. B O D Hoiberg O slash. Oh, GM. Bodo Gimlet. It's like it's like somewhere from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, um, it's Bilbo Baggins Gimlet. So, okay, when you look at – let's stop and move back for a second. Let's just put it this way. This team that they lost to didn't have a logo in Google search. No. <laughs> um, they do on FOTMA, but the, the point is that they're in the Europa Conference League, which we've talked about very sparingly because it's embarrassing. Uh, there's two teams, realistically. If you go through, there's like some that you recognize the names of. Three, Ren. Roma and Tottenham. That's it. Everybody else is like, maybe you've heard of them from Europa League. That's it. Uh, two of those three lost this this week. So it's uh, it's anyone's game, I suppose. But it's 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 a heavily rotated, um, heavily rotated side for Mourinho um, and for Spurs. Um, but they both go down in pretty spectacular fashion. Specifically, Roma. Um, we're starting. What was the tweet you saw? It was year three gets earlier and earlier every year, <laughs> yes, or yes. every club he goes to. I mean, yeah, yeah it took three, it took year what, three, year three came for early. Yeah, uh, the town is called. I just played it on Wikipedia while you were talking. Buda, <laughs> and uh, it is in northern Norway, which is basically Oof. the ass freezing asshole of Coldville. Yeah, basically, this is where Santa is from. <laughs> right it, they are just from the ass cold asshole of coldville is blah, blah, the uh average let's see let's see the daily mean in july is 56 degrees wow <laughs> in july so- so it's fucking cold as shit. That fucking cold. No wonder he was spouting off about his reserve team. I know. So he fucking had to freezing. fucking go there and freeze his dick off. In- oh, that's amazing. You know oh, what? The municipality is located just north of the Arctic Circle. Just for so people want to know. <laughs> you know what? He fucking deserves nothing better. Fuck that idiot. His cold heart found a special place yeah. for fucking Grit. It's like Grit, town of Grinch. Anyway, Spurs, uh, this is where Roma went to lose 6-1. This is fantastic. Did they go by boat? Like, what the fuck were they doing? <laughs> <laughs> and that is far. Like, from Rome to there is just like from like the center yeah. of civilization in history to a town that when Rome was at its peak was basically people fucking bears. So <laughs> he went up there to the bear fucking town and got fucked <laughs> by, by the bear. bear fuckers. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> So oh, just an the amazing Revenant performance. Two, starring Jose Mourinho. Yeah, just, just, just Mourinho. I think sees that Newcastle job. He sees that it's high profile. He he did get early Chelsea, if you remember. Oh. He was the first uh, under Abramovich, but that team had finished second the year before. So let's just be fair about uh, that Chelsea team. It was not the same. It was really good, um, and so. He's going to go to Newcastle. This is my prediction because he's famous, uh, hopefully. 
and we'll see what happens there. Uh, I think he's angling for it. He literally said the other day, I have a little bit of my soul with Newcastle because I was Bobby Robson's translator. <laughs> oh my God, what a dickhead. Um, <laughs> there's already sort of a cup final feeling with Newcastle and Spurs because oh, yeah. of A, uh, the fact that we were the first game after that. B, I oh, fucking hate more, their fans. We have and more C, good graphics next. We do. There he is. <laughs> Steve Bruce is finally gone. Right? I wish we had a gift that his head rolled away. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> A higher production value than we can afford right now. But uh, Steve Bruce finally gets the sack. Um, I, you didn't. I felt bad for him um, because you I know felt, what? I felt bad for him after I read his quote, which I have to hunt down. Yeah, it was he, he was called a cabbage head by the fans. Um, no, he called himself a cabbage head. No, no, no. He was like, I've been tired of getting called a cabbage head, essentially. Some, something along those lines. But, you know, he. you read that and you're like, okay, we, we do a lot of joking on the show. We're like – that guy might kill himself. Like that's a that's a that's a real possibility here. Like somebody make sure they keep an eye on him at all times. So wait, wait, um, I'm gonna read the quote. It's really sad. And my quote on our board was: "This sounds like a conversation I have with my therapist about how my parents felt about me. When we get beat, I get very low. And when you're managing in the Premier League, you do get better at dealing with it. You have to. Let's see if I, I can't do Steve Ruth. I thought I could handle everything thrown at me, but it has been very, very, very tough." To never really be wanted and to feel that people wanted me to fail, to read people constantly saying I would fail and that I was useless, a fat waste of space, a stupid, tactically, tactically inept cabbage head or whatever. And it was from day one. <laughs> he's, he's, now, he's, now his watch has ended. Now his watch go. has ended. He's just hated He's hated. They hate him. Yeah, they did. Well, there's it was a couple weird because he wanted that job so bad, right? I had well, here, I was corrected here, by a few thing. Newcastle fans. Here's the thing. Him. He he's from the area that matters yeah. to Geordies because it's way, relative scale. It's yeah. in the middle of nowhere for England, but it's really yeah. just like it's the difference it's the, between it's England's bear fuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. England's bear fuckers. Um, but the thing was was that he managed Sunderland, and once he did that, he's immediately disqualified from anything resembling Newcastle. This is like blood feud beyond blood feud. What would be a good example? It's like a, co a college football rivalry that no one cares about except them in the middle of nowhere, like Boise versus Idaho, like yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Right, it's like, right, right. what? Who cares? You have a green field. I mean, a blue field. What's wrong right. with you people? But it's like that game, and you're just like, why? Like the Red River rivalry. Something ridiculous, but Sunderland-Newcastle is blood feud. And Sunderland disappeared. They had their own show, which, you know, if you want to watch the sadness time, yeah, at, a, at a level of doom, it's the Sunderland Till I Die documentary on Netflix. It's so sad that it's as sad as Steve Bruce's comment. Like, it's <laughs> like an embodiment of Steve Bruce being sad. Something's going on in that area. But anyway, they hate him for that. And he was he should know that they were never going to love him for that. Yeah, right. that's fair. And, and, and Rafa was so good at PR and would get in with the fans, even though the football was just as shitty, he spun it better. Yeah. Unlike Steve Bruce, he'd be like, well, we were unlucky. I'm like, no, you can't fucking keep saying you're unlucky. Like, change the luck. Yeah. So, uh, but he's loved by his players. Alan St. Maximan, our favorite player of the year, um, wrote a really lovely piece about how great a guy he was of them hugging. And that 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 gave me something. Like, the players love you. I have respect for you. But Steve Bruce, 20 years, 1,000 games managed across all competitions, had some moments. But I think he's one of these things where his generation of manager is dying out. Yeah. A 4-4-2 English, blood and thunder, drink and don't take care of yourself type of managers. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> like style of play of Sean Dyke, but I don't even think, but he didn't have like the analytics side. Like those guys mm -hmm. that play the Simeone style, they are now like, yes, we play Simeone style, but we're completely aware of it. I think Bruce was playing that way, but just wasn't even aware of what it meant or how it worked. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He was like, this is how we play, blah, blah, blah. Cause we're not good enough. Whereas Dice is like, we're not good enough. This is how we play this versus what, yeah. this is how we play because we're not good enough versus we're not good enough. This is how we play. I sure. know that's like a little difference, but it's, it's an important one. It's like, he's not even aware of how bad they are 
Yeah. They just play that way. <laughs> like Whereas, Sean Dyche doesn't have anybody the caliber of Alan St. Maximin. Right? Not if, even at all. Like, if he now, did, he if might he not did, play he like might that. let him be free. But right. I think he doesn't want him. I think he likes these guys that are all filled with muscle and makes them all wear ties because that's just <laughs> Sean Dyche. And that's the last time we're going to talk about Burley. Uh for the rest of the year. Uh do we do we want to until they take points about, off of one of our teams and we curse and screw Do they want do we want to talk about Joe? Yeah, how's Joe doing? Joe. Joe of Attitude of Gratitude. We don't have our banners anymore. We love Joe. He's helped Mike afford his wedding. He's helped me start saving money for Aveline's eventual therapy. So Joe <laughs> of Attitude of Gratitude Consulting has been a wonder. He's more on the tactical sense. He's your He's a very, he's the Pep Guardiola of finding money that you need. Very adept, very intense. Make sure that you take care of everything you need. Make sure you're not paying more. Make sure you're not double dipping. Like, hey, your YouTube subscription and your Sling TV subscription has an overlap of 80 channels. Why don't you just get rid of one of them? What a great idea. So uh, he really asks you those questions to help you find the money you need to save money and move yourself forward. So check out Joe at Attitude of Gratitude Consulting.com and let him know that the Chop Sports Media Group sent you to him in New Jersey, where Chops is still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now back to the football. Um, to we the have football. a we have a Friday game. We are excited. We do. And you know we what? do. do we, this yeah. might we might dip in and out of the best bet segment at this point because yeah I think um, you're right I think there's it's weird I, I'm almost telling you not to watch the games on Saturday because there's not a whole heck of a lot of interest there um, but Friday sounds fun and I disagree Sunday watch all the games they're fucking awesome football's awesome I'm an that's advocate <laughs> yeah that's fair all right but um, yeah I I, I think that. Um, Arsenal versus Aston Villa uh, tomorrow. Well, Friday, 3 p.m. Get your now, weekend started early. Now, you know, he, here, here's the thing, right? Arsenal played on Monday, pulled it out of their ass late. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't have European games. I understand that. That's fine. But to have to play on a Monday and then a Friday is weird. That's it's too... A, a out of the ordinary games that you would not play at that time at a normal time. Yes. So not so much that they can't do it, but that it's unusual makes me feel like Arsenal could be in trouble in this game. Mm -hmm. I think they could be in trouble because Villa is a better team than them. Um, <laughs> yeah, but they are at home and they're at home. You know, Arsenal at home is a pretty good bet, but they have not been playing well. And I think that frankly, you know, Crystal Palace should have won that game. They were up oh, yeah. a goal and they lost in the final minute. And my favorite player outside of Alan St. Maxima, they are the yin and yang. One is a white blonde haired guy. And the other one is a black French African who wears headbands. They're like mirrors of each other. They're the yin <laughs> and yang of my favorite players. If they played to get, oh my God, Gallagher at Newcastle, please. I can't even talk about it. That just got my fucking arms hair standing up. Those two playing together, it'd be crazy. <laughs> anyway, um, but Villa are plus three favorite, plus 300 underdogs. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's a little silly. Like, nobody should be a plus 300 underdog against Ars uh, Arsenal. Just no. It, it, just, they, they're not good enough to get that much respect. Look, and Villa's know. been waffling. We were high on Villa. I don't remember they've where had some exactly. Tough, they've had some tough, like the, they just got their teeth kicked in against Wolves. It was really bad. Yeah. That was a and really bad loss. And maybe think, that's where the plus 300 is coming from. I think the biggest miss we had about players and teams so far probably was Villa. But as a relate, as it relates to it, Emi Buendia hasn't been what we've expected to be. He uh, hasn't been playing. He has well. He has. That's the point. Is that he? Well, he's done a lot of that traveling that I complained about all the Spurs players doing. But yeah. even early, he wasn't taking games by the scruff of the neck like you were sort of waiting for him to do. Mm -hmm. And it, we're not saying against giant uh, competition here against you know the Wolves of the league, right? That's a game. And I'm not saying he didn't play that game again, but like he should be much more of a staple. And if he was early on, he would have been playing more. 
So yeah, I think I think that's the, one the, the, the big issue for them was they were trying to integrate Bailey and he got hurt after they won that game. Mm-hmm. Buendia has been playing more, uh, but I don't think he's come necessarily to affect them just yet. And the partnership between Watkins and um, between Watkins and Ings has not really materialized. But the best player on Villa is John McGinn. So please keep an eye on him. He plays sort of the box-to-box midfielder uh, with Louise, who's the holder. And I still really like Villa. It's just I think they just need a little bit more time. It's hard to integrate and change the way you play from Grealish, who basically dominated the ball nonstop yeah. and slowed everything down. If you watch City, you kind of can go, oh, fucking, will you just move the ball? Uh, and Buendia will get there. But right now, McGinn's been keeping them afloat. Uh, they've been having defensive issues. It feels like Tyrone Mings makes a stupid mistake every game. Uh, and they they really shouldn't have lost to uh, Wolves. Bad goals, a deflected goal off the ass into on a free kick in the 95th minute is what did them in. But, uh, you know, we shall see. The prediction by who scored is a 2-2 draw, which... Uh, uh, that'd be fun. Which would be um, so awesome. Yeah, exactly. One thing that's important to note, and I don't know if that accounts for this, but according to Dean Smith, Bertrand Traore and um, Leon Bailey will be in the squad. Will they start oh, good. That's is a good, good. question. Um, right. But will they, will they, you know, they will be in the squad. So I think that that's a boost that Villa desperately needs. Um, yeah, just something else, something to break yeah. teams down. And yeah. so um, I'm, I mean, I'm riding with you on Villa. I know that's one of your best bets, but I'm doing it too. Yeah. And then um, Kier- T- Tierney and Saka are both unavailable, and basically that's Arsenal's offense. Exactly. So right. I, I'm, I'm going in, and, and again, you kind of have to play how the bounces go, right? Arsenal got a bounce last time that they didn't deserve. So that they, there's nothing. Like they get their comeuppance. Like the Premier League does not mess around, except for Liverpool, which I guess is undefeated cosmically all time. But like, fucking, if you get one, it. you're gonna lose one somewhere down the line pretty soon. It did so lose ninety six people's lives. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's gonna be the good one. I think that. So it's just off. it's just kind of payback, right? It's right, they did right. sacrifice a lot to the football. They gods. did. They did. Literally. Um, <laughs> horrible. <was> horrible. <laughs> Horrible, even for listen. Us. I'm a fucking, I'm a mank scum. Come at me, Liverpool fans. That's Fuck true. You. Um, again, <laughs> I'm not really all that in thrilled, like thrilled with the Saturday slate, uh, aside from the late game, which is Brighton Man City, which I'm gonna let you have a moment. That I mean, that's but the thing is, so to most people, that game means nothing, right? To that you, is a game everything. that that no one cares about except me, right? That is a fun game. Last game of the season after City had won the league. Brighton did win this game 3-2. It was a barn burner. I am less... Sorry. I am less enthralled with Brighton without Basuma, who is apparently out on bail and training. Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, Because I'm really following this. I'm like reading the fucking Brighton Argos, the local newspaper, to try and find out when he's going to play. (laughs) So, because I'm not, I feel bad. Like I really had a lot invested in him, and he apparently committed assault in a in a in a in a in a club. You know, I hope it didn't happen. He was arrested. They're still investigating. I don't know how that works. Like, don't you just know? Uh, but I do. I do. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, and I am going on the uh, being black in England uh, defense. Like they just kind of arrest his ass <laughs> just because. Just because he's like, I'm French. This is how we do things. So I don't know what's going to happen with Basuma. But without Basuma, that team is not going to be able to do what I thought it could do. No. Uh, and so, but they're still playing well. They're still in the top four, still. For so now. it is a top four clash. It, um, it, it, it quite literally is. That's fair. <laughs> cannot take cannot take that away from you. And I'm afraid. Uh, you know, they have players, they get into position. This is a perfect example between United and Brighton. Brighton are not as talented as United. Not even one player would get into the United starting 11. Not one. Not even on their bench. But they have a coach. They have a way to play. They know what they're going to do outside of the top four. They are the number one passing team in terms of total passes. They have Mm -hmm. a way to play. 
And if you fuck up, they will beat you. Trossard sure. will put a weird goal on you. And you'll be like, how the fuck are we losing to Brighton? Then mm-hmm. secretly, they actually have a good defense. It's not all offense. Uh, they they sold Ben White, who actually is a liability on defense. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. And replaced him who with a defender who they had had on loan. And we're just like, oh, we sent you on loan because we wanted to show off Ben White. And now they bring um, Duff and Dunky, Duff it. Dunk and Duffy are back together again and kicking ass the way they always were. So uh, we'll see what happens. If Lamptey can come back, I think then I'll be back in love with with Brighton. But I am worried for my friend Basuma because he was like, he was the guy that Spurs need. He's the guy that United cry for. He's the guy that if Fernandinho goes, City should grab him. He's the guy who's like that next big, strong, French defensive midfielder who's cultured on the ball and just needs to add goals. And instead he added prison. And so (laughs) that's bad. Uh, I love him. uh, He added Um, prison. Uh, I'm going to go right into my bets because um, I just think it's time. We're just going to blast through them. So the first bet is a little bit of a tricky one. Uh, Actually, let's go with the Villa. Villa plus 300 is a slam dunk. I think that Dean Smith is a good coach. He will push this team forward. They'll get that win in Arsenal. I mean, it, I could do draw no bet maybe down the road, but I, I like Villa plus 300 to win outright away from home, especially without Saka and Tierney. Then I took a love bet. I took Brighton plus one at plus 130. So that means yeah. that Brighton has a one goal lead going into the game automatically. City have to win by more than one. Scary. Then for the United game, I am giving a hat tip and a acknowledgement that they do fight to the end and they do have Cristiano. So I have United to score last at plus 110, win or lose. <laughs> I love the prop. I love that. Yeah. And then the other one is Liverpool to be drawn at halftime and then win in the end at plus 500. So, so I'm a big fan of that. I like to do those every so often. It's And the important thing about that is draw at halftime is arguably the most likely outcome just because and, – and, and in a in a Liverpool-Man United game, maybe not necessarily. but Well, historically it has been, but the way these two teams are playing now is a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just um, – I enjoy the like watching a 0-0 like – that's it's almost so predictable that you're like, all right, these teams are going to turn around the second half. They're going to come out. They're going to be sluggish. They're going to be, you know, kind of discombobulated and you can get that value. And it's effectively like a mini parlay, right? Yeah. Um, it's a mini, so, it is a mini parlay. Yes. Right. So you've got draw and then Liverpool to win plus 500, throw some shackles on that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Now the only, the only thing I'm concerned about with this draw Liverpool win is how bad United are in the first half of games. Right, which sure. is why I took the United to score last bet. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. a hedge within it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because you know they'll they'll they may come out, get the doors blown off them in the first five minutes, ten minutes, mm-hmm. and then have to fight their way back at the end of the game to get the draw. So yeah. uh, I'm not sure if how that will work, but I did like the, the it was juicy at draw draw win plus five hundred is just that's a big mm-hmm. number. Oh, absolutely. And then what else did you have? Is that, is that all of the, them? the Brighton plus one plus one thirty. So right. So you got getting three. a goal okay. to start the United last score and then Villa yes, plus three. That's right. That's right. And so for me, I like I said, I've been talking shit about Saturday uh and the slate, but Sunday's great. Um you've got West Ham and Spurs and Brentford Leicester simultaneously. We almost had a Brentford free pod. Almost. Almost. Um I'm possible. going to go. <laughs> I'm going to parlay the over on both games, West Ham Spurs and Brentford Leicester. Both. Why two and a would half. you? Why do you? Why do you like West Ham Spurs as an over? Because Spurs are going to give up a goal, <laughs> and they're going to win enough. two to one. Fair enough. <laughs> and Spurs. Well, yeah, that and Spurs can't defend, and West right. Ham just played on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
I think and they're I, I, undefeated in Europe, the Moyes boys. Well, they're going to be defeated on Sunday at home. Um, <laughs> I think the Spurs win that game, but more importantly, I think the over cashes, and I think that Brentford Leicester City is going to be a bit of a barn burner. In fact, I might watch that instead of West Ham Todd. I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I at home, real... at home, Brentford at home, really good. Yeah. I do have one thing that just popped into my head, and oh, I know what it was. If you do watch West Ham Spurs, just watch Declan Rice. We are seeing the emergence of a great English midfielder. He is a guy, when you watch West Ham and it's not your team, you go, fuck, that dude's good. He's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> he's everywhere. He has a weird kind of, he looks like he's going to clatter into people. He's giant. He kind of moves funny. I wouldn't say he's fast. His gait is odd. So he has a, he does catch the eye. He doesn't look like a footballer. He's kind of tall. No, and... no. So he's the same size as Pogba, but runs well, like he looks a like white a, guy. He looks like a tight end. Yeah, he's kind of goofy. And uh, he loves it. He clearly plays for the shirt. He and Mason Mount were both in the Chelsea youth squad together, and and he had to move on. It I do have a, I, I have a question like for you. Good. I don't know. You try and find this out. Somebody out there try and find this out because I couldn't do it. I keep thinking about Chelsea and all these teams. What – team has the most players in the league that debuted for them the most wait sorry the, mo the so let's team say in the league what team has produced the most premier league players oh, 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 oh i see oh uh, no it's chelsea of course it is it has to be right it has to be it has to be because they they splinter everybody out right like with the lone army we talk about it all the time but I, um, I wonder if it's united with the, like the one or two a year Oh, you mean because they never make they no, no, I, I mean, currently, like what? No, I mean, because you we know the academy produces players, but are they making debuts in the Premier League? See, that's the question I have. Like, we can yeah. go to the championship and we can see this Chelsea guys everywhere, but are yeah. there literally like if you were to take the bios of every single team player in the Premier League who's made an appearance, how many of them started at team Y? So, you're like, saying from Premier League academies. Well, right? if it's like, Premier League, you if it's Premier League it. academies, it's got to be Chelsea. It has, it to, has be. to be. Has to be. Yeah, no, it's Chelsea, definitely. Uh, wait, let me get all my bets. But in. who so, made their so, deb debuts the most? What team has had the most debuts? Oh, for it's their own club. Or uh, that? Probably yes, they is could United. have debuted with their own club. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. So, like Connor Gallagher wouldn't count for Chelsea. He would count for uh, Palace. But uh, see, that's the thing, right? He never played. He, I don't think Gallagher ever played for Chelsea, but that's I would saying. count him as a debut. I see. That's where it gets fucking weird. Yeah. Like Billy Gilmore does. does count for Chelsea. And, he did play and, for Chelsea. And another one more question to your question. Is it Premier League or is it English football? Like, does the fucking EFL Cup count? Because then Billy Gilmore counts for Chelsea and not Norwich. Right. Right. And then so, like there's a half a dozen freaking city players who've showed up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then it gets kind of wacky and you're like, all right, hold on. This is another. Well, by the way, city have another uh, Foden on their hands. Well, no, they don't. Foden no, they is don't. incredible. <laughs> but uh, uh, Cole Palmer really good. Yeah. scored in this Champions League debut. Good for him, man. Sort of a, a Havertz type. Tall, lanky finisher. Yeah. Plays a little bit behind a striker. So city have another one that it looks like they're trying to break in, but we'll see. You mm -hmm. know, city players breaking through. If you think about Foden, it basically took three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, God, yeah. Um, all right, let me give you my – so, again, Spurs, West Ham, and Leicester, Brentford, both over two and a half. That's uh, a parlay at plus 230. Um, mm -hmm. I've got Wolves' money line. Uh, they're going two leads, but I still like them to to take the three points. Yeah, they're plus the, – Wolves are good. They have a better yeah. coach. I think, yeah. like, Nuno is kind of holding them back. They're still – they still haven't performed their XG – I like the Bruno Large thing. Uh, you know, there's gotta be there's gonna be a game where someone gets Triore. That I was gonna I was gonna do Triore to score. In fact, I haven't seen what he is. I'm gonna look at that actually. Because you gotta you just it's gotta happen, right? A blind it just has fucking to. squirrel has to find a nut at some point, right? Like yeah. I'm actually gonna look it up right now. What is Adama Triore to score at Leeds uh goals? Let's see. Um he is plus 300. Come on, guys. Maybe that's something we sprinkle a little bit on as well. 
Uh, but you know what I would do? Trey already to score and Wolves to win. And that would be like probably plus 500. Um, yeah. so, and then so wolves, wolves expect if we do the expected goals table, it's Liverpool City, both at Liverpool's at plus 12, plus 13, City at plus 12, West Ham plus four, Brentford plus three and a half, Everton plus three and a half. Wolves are in the top five, top six. Yeah. in expected goal difference sure. so I believe that. that is the if you took their expected goals and their expected goals against you would get a team that is uh underperforming by two oh. goals and you liverpool by the way is the best team in the league right now. no i know but so it's i'm annoying. going to wait until the lineups come out to decide i might do just money line i might do triari to score and wolves to win we'll see We'll see. Um, but if, obviously, I'm going to wait to see if he starts. Uh, and then the last one, uh, I have to have some action on Man United-Liverpool, right? So I'm going to go with both teams to score and Liverpool to win, uh, plus 275. So like you said, the, the Ronaldo factor, I, this seems kind of wacky. Another one feels like the over might hit, but the over is three, and I just – if it was two and a half, I'd smash it. But I, I – man, Three is – yeah, two one, two one is not – is you got to go is, over two one. Yeah. Well, two now, one gets like you. Said, a, two like, one gets you a draw, right? Liverpool like, could re- I, the thing is, that there there is a world where Liverpool just fucking annihilates. Oh, them. they beats the brakes off them, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now, yeah, oh, by I'm, the way, I am going to the Fan Fest in LA. Oh, the Premier League Fan Fest. Yes. When is that? It will be on Sunday. Oh, I'm very cool. Be, oh, I, maybe I'll be able to give a shout out to Rebecca Lowe. We'll get her on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wear your shirt. Wear your shirt. <laughs> Which shirt? The squeaky bum time shirt, you dope. I don't know where it is. Oh, for Christ's sake. Laurent, you had one job. Um, I would <laughs> I would be remiss uh, if I didn't mention that in the uh, squeaky bum time Premier League Fantasy League, um, I'm 8-0. I'm undefeated. Uh, I do not have the most points, though. Laurent and Chari have the most points by a cunt's hair. Um but we lost again. We're 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 the XG darlings. We're fucking kicking you ass. You are the losing. XG darlings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must have blown some teams out really bad. Oh yeah, you have Salah and Mane. Like, of course yeah. you do. Um, in the second division, the B division, because we do have promotion and relegation this year. Um, I don't even know how to say Meads Lignica is six and two, and AS Poundtown, strong, strong team names. Uh, <laughs> they're currently tied for first, but um Meads. Who- is, uh, the, what's the relegation battle like in our division? Oh, that's a good question. Um, actually, it's funny you say. Um, Hank and Pete, the uh, the Chelsea Romans Army team, they're currently in dead last, despite having the third most points. They're actually the XG darlings. Um, oh, they're they're Brighton. And, and they're Joe in the Connelly, relegation who called zone, you out. Should... Yes, Joe Connolly, who called you out, uh, had the upset last week. He is still in a relegation spot. Um, but only by one game. So there's two teams that are three and five and two teams that are two and six uh, on right. nine points and then six respectively, obviously. So, yeah, there's a there's a lot more to play for this year. So the top four make Mike, the playoffs. We got to wrap eight. it up or else we won't be able to stream this thing. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. Get us out of here. <laughs> that was the Squeaky Bum Time podcast with Mike Salerno and Laurent Cortines. We are the football wing of the Chop Sports Network. We record on Tuesdays and Fridays, so be sure to subscribe wherever you get podcast and you never miss an episode please please find a way to rate and review on apple i'm actually calling you people out no one has reviewed this show since march so give us a goddamn review may, may whatever <laughs> march may it started with him so you know so what that it helps just keep listening we love you okay bye <laughs>